Joining us now is Prakash Karat. Now, Prakash, I know this is a very difficult time for you. Jyoti Basu was a leader you worked with for 60 years. Can I just ask you, even at this time, how do you assess his contribution and the legacy he leaves for Bengal and for India? As a communist leader, Jyoti Basu was unique because he was able to combine his work in the legislatures and parliamentary forums with the work of building up the movement of the workers, peasants and other working people. He became a legislator first in 1946 before independence and since then practically for a continuous stretch of more than four decades uh, he served in various capacities as a leader of the opposition, as the deputy chief minister, the home minister and then finally the chief minister of West Bengal and he taught communists how to work in parliamentary forums to serve the people and to fight to bring about basic changes, policy changes. I think this was unique. Nobody else has combined this. A combination of tremendous skill in legislature and in government combined with keeping in touch with the people and always standing for the rights of the working people. Uh, Prakash, uh, you know, there's so many different aspects of the man. What do you see that was unique about uh, Jyoti Basu? I can see that you're, you're uh, grieving and, uh, and it's difficult to recall these things, but what do you recall something uh, unique about uh, the great leader Jyoti Basu? I think, uh, first of all, as the Chief Minister of West Bengal, uh, in the 23 years that he served here, he made a distinct uh, impression by creating uh, the West Bengal was a legacy, had a legacy of partition, of communal carnage. It was a hotbed for communal politics, the earlier pre-independence Bengal. And Jyoti Basu created a sec stable, secular environment in West Bengal. I think that is something which is important for national politics. I don't think any other political leader has played the role of strengthening secularism in India as Jyoti Basu did. And the second major contribution is that he was the only leader who translated into practice the slogan given even during our independence struggle, that is land to the tiller. He ensured that land reforms were implemented whereby millions of small farmers and peasants, landless peasants got land and security of tenure. This I think will be his lasting achievement. Right, Prakash reminds us of uh, so many battles that Jyoti Basu actually fought. He fought against the British, he fought the trade union mo movement against the Congress party, he fought the Naxalites, and then in many ways he fought uh, regression in his own party. Uh, but we'll come all, uh, to all of that later. But the end of the Basu era has left a number of challenges for the CPM. The CPIM mourning the loss of its patriarch. Jyoti Basu's demise not only marks the end of an important chapter in Indian politics and the communist movement, but also presents future challenges for the left. His precious legacy is there for all of us to cherish and nurture. We pledge to carry forward his cause and work. For the left, the biggest challenge is to retain what Basu and his colleagues built over three decades, the Red Fort in West Bengal. Basu's dominance was so complete that he left little space for the opposition in Bengal. Even the worst left critic had words of praise for Basu's political acumen. Basu stepped down to hand over the reins of power to Buddhadev Bhattacharji in 2000. But his party forced him to continue as a Politburo member. In the last few years, he had seen the left going through its most turbulent phase, both in Bengal as well as at the national level. From its best ever performance in 2004 Lok Sabha polls, the left suffered its worst ever electoral defeat last year.